the return of Travel Explained Summit. Revenge travel is definitely a term that describes my current mantra. Next up, we have Sandra Moffat. Sandra came to Canada from Ireland in 2015 and stays connected to her homeland as market manager for Canada at Tourism Ireland. Sandra leads the team in Toronto across all advertising, media and publicity initiatives to get Canadians traveling to Ireland again. Sandra, Ireland has been on my wish list for a very long time, so I'm going to start with a very important question. Is Ireland open for international travel? Yes, yes it is. So Ireland's been open for international travelers since July 19th, actually. We've been welcoming fully vaccinated Canadians. The vaccinations that are accepted are Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson, so all the ones that we have here in Canada. Um, there is no uh, testing, no quarantine required if you're fully vaccinated in Ireland at the moment. Okay. Now, if you are traveling with children, so if you're traveling with children between 12 and 17, they do have to get a negative PCR test, even if they're traveling with the, um, a fully vaccinated adult. But children under 12 do not have to do that. And all you have to do going into Ireland is fill out, like many destinations, your passenger locator form that just needs the brief top line information about what you're doing during your stay. Well, that made it easier for me as someone who's fully vaccinated. I'm excited and ready to go to Ireland. So who is going to Ireland? Who are the first travelers who are heading back to the Emerald Isle? So I think first and foremost, it's, it's you know, people visiting friends and family. I think people like myself who are living in a different country who are just, you know, getting on the first plane that they can. We've all been away from, from our friends and family for quite a long time. So definitely that first and foremost. But something that we do know in Canada is that one in five Canadians claim Irish ancestry. And I think during the pandemic, a lot of people, you know, we all got new hobbies during the pandemic, I think. <laughs> this is true. Um, so a lot of people started exploring their heritage. And a lot of people now we're seeing are booking travel to Ireland to go and uncover that and uncover their roots. You know, four of Canada's prime ministers have claimed Irish ancestry. Ancestry. You can see on Toronto's waterfront here, like there is the Irish famine memorial sculptures that directly mirror the sculptures that you can see in Dublin City Quay. So a lot of people are going to experience that. And a fun fact that I learned recently actually was that the largest Gwaeltacht, so Gwaeltacht is an area in Ireland that speaks predominantly the Irish language. The largest Gwaeltacht outside of Ireland is in Tamworth in Ontario. That blew oh. my mind when I found that out. That's a, that's a good connection. <laughs> so I guess there's a lot of people who are now discovering that they have Irish heritage, but maybe know nothing about Ireland. So what are some of the bucket list trips and excursions that they should be looking at doing when they're in Ireland? There's so much to see and do. And I think it really depends on what your passion point is, right? So um, I think after being cooped up in various lockdowns over the last, you know, 16 to 18 months, um, something that we see a lot of people doing is just getting out and getting reinvigorated by nature. And Ireland's a really, really great place to be able to do that. Um, I will never forget, it's a really um, strong memory of mine, standing in Trinity College in Dublin, it's a university in Dublin, right in the heart of the city, and overhearing a group of visitors, they were obviously on vacation, talking about the grass, and they were like, oh my gosh, the grass is so green. And I remember thinking at the time, well, yeah, it's grass, grass is green, you know, I didn't really understand it. But, you know, when I started broadening my own horizons and traveling a bit and going to Europe and going to Asia and then ultimately settling here, I realized what they meant. I realized how luscious our landscape is and how different it really, really is. So, you know, you can stand on the cliffs of Mower and just be on the edge of Europe with the waves crashing beneath you, you know, things like that, really iconic destinations, just meadows of green. There's so much outdoor activities that you can do when you're doing that too. You know, you can hike our mountains, you can, you know, spike our greenways, um, really get out into the nature itself. There's like kayaking along the River Liffey under the famous Hapenny Bridge, for example. And sustainable travel is something that we also see as a really, really big trend. Um, I think everyone's seeing that. And there's so many ways that you can explore that and uncover that in Ireland. We have really amazing eco-friendly hotels like the Ivy Garden Hotel in Dublin. That's an incredible property and um, has some of the lowest carbon emissions in Europe. There is, you know, seaweed foraging and eating right from the landscape. Um, you know, ways to explore Irish culture and the language as well. Like, Dingle, for example, a beautiful village on the southwest of Ireland that's just colourful cottages and Irish language everywhere. And um, it's a really good way to, you know, immerse yourself in local in local culture. That sounds beautiful. And you're, you talked about the greenery. And I've heard how popular golfing is in Ireland. So is the greenery part of why golfing is so popular in Ireland? Probably, actually, yeah. It's known as the green of dreams. Um, so <laughs> I think there's many reasons why golf in Ireland is so popular. You know, some of the most famous golfers in the world hail from Ireland. We have Rory McIlroy and... You know, Shane Lowry, Porrick Harrington, to name but a few. And it's easy to see why they're so famous, because they grew up playing on some of the most exceptional golf courses in the world. Um, Ireland has 400 golf clubs. It has a third of the world's Lynx courses, which is courses on the coast for those 
for those people who aren't golfers like myself. Um, and um, yeah, just some exceptional championship courses. We've been so lucky to host some of the most prestigious golf tournaments in the world. Um, in 2019, the Royal Port Rush in Northern Ireland hosted the Open Championship and we just got announced yesterday that it's going to be hosting it again in 2025. And in Adair Manor, we have the Ryder Cup in 2027 as well. So there is an amazing golf product in Ireland if you're a golfer. But the thing that makes it stand out um, is the 19th hole is what we call it. So you might do your 18 holes of golf, but the most exceptional thing about golfing in Ireland is that 19th hole, the, the hole that you do afterwards, which is kicking back, enjoying the pub after, you know, really kicking back and enjoying um, the, the experience and the atmosphere in Ireland. I like that, the 19th hole. That's the only hole that I golf for the most part because I'm a you terrible, and I both. <laughs> terrible golfer. So our last um, guest, Ron, was talking about revenge travel. So for those of us who have not traveled for a long time and have a lot of money that we want to put towards travel, what are some luxury experiences that one can partake in when they visit Ireland? I guess luxury means something different to everyone, right? right? So whether it is sleeping under the stars in, we have these amazing bubble domes in um, Finlock in County Fermanagh. Um, and because there's not a lot of light pollution, because we don't have big built up cities or anything like that, you can really just immerse yourself in that. Um, there is, you know, glamping and dark skies observatories. There is really unique experiences like staying overnight in a lighthouse on the west coast of Ireland. Um, you know, things that you just wouldn't get to do otherwise. Or classic elegance, like staying in manor homes and five star hotels we have so many of them um, and you know castle properties we've places like Ashford Castle it's 800 years old it was once owned by the Guinness family it's been voted world's best luxury hotel by travel and leisure and others and um, places like Barberstown Castle that I know Colette Vacations um, go to that was once owned by Eric Clapton um, incredible property um, and yeah there's just so so many you know Loch Esk, the Westbury incredible um, properties that you can stay at for luxury experiences but also it's not just about where you stay it's about what you do right so there's so many amazing immersive experiences that you can do you can do falconry on the grounds of these properties you can engage in gin making we have a really big craft gin scene in Ireland and um, you know step dancing whatever it is there's, there's amazing luxury experiences depending on what your interests are. Well, my interest is staying in a castle and pretending to be a princess. So it sounds like I can do that in Ireland. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so on a sadder note, we've really not been able to celebrate St. Patrick's Day in the way that we have in previous years. So is there what's planned for 2022 St. Patrick's Day in Ireland? Because that could be a perfect time to go visit. I think so. I think <laughs> so. It's just around the corner. And I actually know that the St. Patrick's Festival team are already gearing up for the festival. Um, so we did it virtually this year. And we had St. Patrick's Day at home. And that's wonderful. It's right. all great. But nowhere beats St. Patrick's Day in Ireland. So lots to come on that one. Um, we have finally started doing festivals again, though. So after um, October 22nd, there's no restrictions in Ireland. So so, um, you know, Halloween, for example, is probably the next festival that's going to happen. That's really going to kick off festival season for us here in Ireland. Um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Halloween actually originated in Ireland. I did not know that. So 3,000 oh. years ago, it was the Festival of Samhain, which means um, summer's end, it translates in Gaeilge. Um, it was a winter festival to mark the beginning of winter. Sorry, it was a harvest festival. And so many of the traditions that we have here in North America for Halloween actually originated in Ireland. So when you dress up in costume, that originally came from Ireland as we wanted to ward off um, spirits from our crops. If you ever carve a pumpkin at um, Halloween, so that actually came from turnips. The Irish used to carve turnips, really scary faces in the turnips, to stop the spirits from harming their crops. When we emigrated en masse then in the 1800s, we couldn't find turnips. They weren't as readily available, so we just used pumpkins instead. I have to ask though, so I feel like carving a turnip would be so much more difficult than carving a pumpkin. I, I mean, I'm going to try this when I go home, but do you have any tips for people in terms um, of carving turnips? Wear oven gloves. I tried <laughs> it once. <laughs> oven gloves. It didn't go so well for me either. <laughs> so in addition to festivals, Ireland is really known for its music and dance. So what are some of the best ways to experience music and dance in Ireland? One of my favorite ways would just be the local pub, right? One thing I love about home is that you walk through the streets and there's just music streaming onto the streets. You don't have to look to find it. It's just there. Um, so you could walk into a local bar and there's just trad musicians in the corner playing away. Um, and we also have big music festivals. So Tradfest would be the next one that's happening. It was actually the big last live big music festival in Ireland pre-pandemic. So we're excited to bring it back for 2022. Um, it's taking place between January 26th and 30th. Um, tickets are on sale now if anyone's interested in it but this gives you access to really unusual venues that you'd never get access to 
in normal times. So they open up like cathedrals and the mansion house and all these amazing places for concerts for that week. Um, and there's also a lot of ways to experience contemporary music. We're also known for our contemporary music scene. So Windmill Lane Recording Studios is an example. So that's where like U2 and Sinead O'Connor um, and the Cranberries, lots of really big artists record their, recorded their top hits. And you can do a tour through that. It's in Dublin City. Or if you want your photo moment, you know, you can have your princess in a castle moment and you can also have your contemporary music moment if you go to Temple Bar. Um, they have a wall of fame there that has all the big hitters. Rory Gallagher, Bono, all the big ones. So you know I want my princess in a castle moment. I feel like we've, you know, come to terms on that. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I hail from Fiji. That's where my family's from. And I know you don't go in during our winter because it's really hot there. So is it the same for Ireland? Is there a certain time of year that's the best for traveling to Ireland? Uh, I have my personal favorite, so I'm a big fan of fall. I love Halloween. Um, I'm actually traveling back at last, probably the end of November, early December, and I love that time of year because Christmas time in Ireland is just magic. It's absolutely incredible. There's just fairy lights everywhere. There's music curling up, you know, by a fire with a book in a cozy Irish pub with music in the background. There's markets everywhere. So I love Christmas time. We're so lucky in Ireland that we don't get the, you know, hot and humid summers and the really cold winters. It's just mild and moderate all year round. So we do joke that you can get four seasons in a day. So definitely, you know, pack right, get your layers. Um, but there's no bad time to go. So if you want to hook it onto a festival, um, you can do that. Or if you want to just go, you can book it now and be guaranteed that you're not going to get extremes in weather. There's no terrible time to go. Okay, well, that's a good thing to know. So when I do go to Ireland, what is a warm Irish welcome and what does that mean to you? So Ireland is known for our Cade Mila Falcha that translates as 100,000 welcomes. Cade Mila Falcha. Cade Mila Falcha. Cade perfect. Mila Falcha. You're going to fit okay. right in. Okay, perfect. And <laughs> um, so it's known for our 100,000 welcomes. And we've actually been joking quite a lot that there's a lot of those going spare at the moment. You know, we haven't had our international visitors to welcome. And it's something that's so important to the Irish economy. You know, we love our visitors. Um, and we haven't been able to welcome them in the last, you know, 16 to 18 months. So it is just that warm welcome. You can, you can never get lost in Ireland because there's going to be a local who walks up to you and you know gives you directions to where you need to go before you even ask. Right. That sounds amazing. So there are some people who are very interested in coming to Ireland. So CARP member Virginia Parks tells us she's considering flights to Ireland in October 2021. What should she expect with regards to pricing? So once you're flexible on dates, um, there is some really great deals out there at the moment. We have Air Canada flying from Toronto three times a week. Aer Lingus, our national airline, is coming back this September as well. So there is definitely deals to be had. Um, something to be aware of too is that we at Tourism Ireland are launching a massive campaign to bring back travel. We're excited to be able to finally get back. And on September 23rd, we'll be launching a campaign called the Green Button. So green being synonymous with Ireland, of course, the Emerald Isle, and also the word go. So we're ready to go. We're ready to go to Ireland. And what that campaign will be is massive travel deals from all of our partners, um, from Colette Vacations, from all of the airlines. Um, so watch out for that and you'll definitely be able to get some good prices. So I have to ask you, as soon as you hit the ground in Ireland, where is the first place that you have to visit? Oh, for me, um, I am going to just walk through the streets of Dublin. I'm a Dublin girl, so I want just to walk through town and just like that, hear that music streaming onto the streets see everybody smiling at me as we walk by, you know, in big cities like Toronto, like London, you can walk by and, you know, just no one notices you. In Ireland, just everyone smiles, everyone says hello. So I just want to walk through the streets and then get out into nature. I want to go do some hiking. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, want to go to the Cliffs of Mower and that's that amazing cliff face that we have in Ireland. But there's secret hidden gems that you can go to too, like Sleeve League is the highest sea cliff in Europe and that's in County Donegal. So I'm going to, definitely going to take a hike up there. I recommend everybody check it out if they get home. Well, that all sounds amazing. I know I'm going to be planning my next trip to Ireland. So thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sure all of our viewers are just as excited as I am to visit Ireland. So thank you. Can't wait to see you in Ireland. Thank, thank you. you.